Flip through any history book and you'll find that we used to think that the Earth was at the center of the universe, that the sun revolved around the Earth, that the Earth was flat. We used to think that diseases were caused by miasma, clouds of poisonous air. It's easy to look backwards and to see that we were wrong, and that we were wrong a lot. Fallibility, the tendency to make mistakes or to be wrong, is a fundamental fact of the human condition, but it's something that we rarely spend time thinking about. To many of us, fallibility is a dirty word. We dislike our fallible nature. We don't like to be wrong or to make mistakes. We're told that any admission of our fallibility is a sign of failure or weakness, and we try to hide our fallibility wherever we can. We make our goal in life to become infallible, a goal which is both unattainable and problematic. We're going to be wrong in life. We're going to make mistakes. There's no way around the fact that people are fallible. And that can be a difficult fact to stare in the face, but ignoring it won't make it go away. It might even make it worse. So what can we do? We can work to reposition our understanding of fallibility, and we can work to understand how and why we err. We can acknowledge our own fallibility and accept it in others. We can become familiar with the role that fallibility plays in our lives. And to do that, we need to turn to two philosophers in a paper they wrote in the 1970s. Their names were Samuel Gorovitz and Alastair McIntyre. And what they were trying to figure out is why people might make mistakes. They asked themselves the questions, why do we err? What are the causes of our fallibility? And they came to the conclusion that there are three sources of error. The first is ignorance, a lack of information or knowledge. The meteorologist doesn't know enough about hurricanes to tell where it'll hit. The second is ineptitude, a failure to apply the knowledge we have. The doctor has knowledge of the disease, but fails to apply it correctly. These types of errors, ignorance and ineptitude, can be overcome. Scientific progress should overcome ignorance, and training in technology should take care of ineptitude. But there's a third source of error, one that we can't overcome, what they call necessary fallibility. That is, we will never have complete knowledge of the universe. No matter how vast scientific knowledge becomes or how rapidly technology advances, we won't understand every aspect of the universe. There will always be some degree of uncertainty in the world, and where there's uncertainty, fallibility will follow. These three sources of errors can help us navigate human fallibility. When we make mistakes, we can ask ourselves, why did these errors happen? To what extent were these errors avoidable? Did we have enough information? Did we incorrectly apply our knowledge? Or was there some degree of necessary fallibility? In the case of ignorance or ineptitude, there's probably something we could do better, a way to become less fallible. But if there's some degree of necessary fallibility, we can't beat ourselves up over it. At some point, we must accept the necessary fallibility of our existence. I think that many of us understand that we're going to make mistakes in life, that we'll misinterpret evidence, botch basic algebra, or forget Aunt Deborah's birthday again. But we rarely extend this same grace to others, especially experts. We expect economists, meteorologists, and doctors to be infallible, as if three degrees and 30 years of experience could negate the intrinsically fallible nature of human judgment. But that's just not the case. As Atul Gawande writes, human judgment, even expert human judgment, falls well short of certainty. When a meteorologist forecasts a sunny day and it begins to rain, we curse them. And when our loved ones go to see a doctor, we forget that they too are fallible humans. When we fail to recognize fallibility in others, we tend to do two things. First, we put them on a pedestal. We create a separation between them and us. We say, we're fallible, but they are less so. Second, we curse them when they make their inevitable tumble off the pedestal, and we see them for what they really are, fallible humans. I like this quote from Atul Gawande, where he writes, You have a cough that won't go away. And then, it's not science you call upon, but a doctor. A doctor with good days and bad days. A doctor with a weird laugh and a bad haircut. A doctor with three other patients to see, and inevitably, gaps in what he knows, and skills he's still trying to learn. It can be helpful to humanize the people we interact with, to see their fallible nature as we see our own. I don't mean to say that we should excuse all mistakes that could have been prevented, but what I am saying is that all of us exist in an uncertain world. And even if we overcome the hurdles of ignorance and ineptitude, there's still a large degree of necessary fallibility that we face. Even if it were possible to remove fallibility from the equation of our lives, I'm not sure we would want to. Montaigne understood this in the 16th century, writing, if others examined themselves attentively, as I do, they would find themselves, as I do, 
full of inanity and nonsense. Get rid of it I cannot without getting rid of myself. We are all steeped in it, one as much as another. But those who are aware of it are a little better off, though I don't know. Our fallible nature, the inanity and nonsense as Montaigne calls it, is what makes us human. Take it away and we lose ourselves. If everything were certain and humans were infallible, there would be nothing to strive for, nothing to learn, and that would be a bleak existence indeed. This notion of fallibility doesn't mean that we can't improve. Of course we can get better. We can work to be more aware of how we err, and we can work to reduce the mistakes that we make as a result of ignorance or ineptitude. But at some point, we have to accept the necessary fallibility of our existence. I like how Nate Silver approaches this when he talks about reducing biases. He writes, You should work to reduce your biases, but to say you have none is a sign that you have many. To state your beliefs up front, to say, here's where I'm coming from, is a way to operate in good faith and recognize that you perceive reality through a subjective filter. As we move throughout our lives, we can recognize and acknowledge our fallibility. We don't have to hide it or ignore it. We can see it for what it really is, a fundamental fact of our human condition. It can be helpful to remember that we all come from a long line of fallible humans. We've been making mistakes for thousands of years. And while we can become better, we'll never become perfect. And that's okay. <laughs>